a very good evening to you one and all today we are on the webinar of the collaborative learning cafe and we are we have dr maria fonseca to tell us about the very interesting topic plants that thrill but kill in other words poisonous plants dr maria invites us to know your plants which are growing in your garden or backyard professor dr maria aninha araujo ricardo fonseca is the principal of st joseph vaz college at sankwal goa she was the vice principal of st xavier's college mapsa from 2014 to 2018 and she was also the head of the department of botany at st xavier's college mapsa for many years she was awarded the gold medal for standing first for her msc in botany she is also awarded the fellow of the indian association for angiosperm taxonomy iaat in 2017 for her contribution in the field of taxonomy she has been for her phd she has worked on a genus of grass and the topic for her phd was systematic studies of the genus glyphocloa of the family poaceae she has guided 3 mphil students and five projects for the third year bsc botany students she has published eight papers in state national and international journals and has presented 12 papers at the various national and international level conference she had the privilege of attending the the in uh, the icbn conference on the nomenclature section at Pe peking university in shenzhen china in 2017 she also attended the 19th international botanical congress at shenzhen in china also in july 2019 she has published four four books one Xavier's Campus Flora Volume 1 then second the Center for Medicinal and Aromatic Plants third the Medicinal and Aromatic Plants which has in which about 100 plants are listed then the fourth one is a manual of algae of Anjuna Coast Goa with an ISBN number she has been the resource person for state workshop on mangroves titled capacity building in systematic diversity and ecology of mangroves and associated flora with special reference to goa coast organized by the department of botany kamal college for women goa in november 2014 again she was the resource person for the state workshop on marine algae organized by the department of botany kamal college for women goa in coordination with the national institute of oceanography dona paula which was held at st xavier's college in 2015 she has attended a number of workshops and seminars and at the same time has organized a number of workshops seminars and talks She is a member of the Bio Board of Studies for, Bot for Botany and Environmental Studies. Recently, she was appointed as a member of the Board of Studies of Environmental Sciences for the Master's degree by Goa University. She is a life member of the Indian Association for Angiosperm Taxonomy, a life member of Society of Envi Ethnobotanists. CSIR National Botanical Research Institute Lucknow and a life member of the Botanical Society of Goa she has conducted a number of field trips for the third year vsc students in many places in india such as mangalore and kasargarh delhi Agar, agra dehradun shimla chandigarh delhi pune lonavala kandala mableshwar and such yeah. 
she has also written articles on the newspaper the goan on cassia fistula which is the golden shower and disease killer and she has also uh, written two modules of e content which were conducted for project distavo at goa university organized by the directorate of higher education with this brief introduction i hand you over to dr maria dr maria please take over maria thank maria. you emilia for your lovely introduction <laughs> thanks maria uh, first and foremost i would like to thank the collaborative learning cafe team the director for the mervin de souza mr fredrick norona mr savio dias for giving me this opportunity uh, to talk on this topic which will be useful for parents for their which will be much useful to be aware of the plants around them to protect their children and their pets my special thanks to dr emilia mascarenhas who is a good friend of mine and a colleague we have worked together for many years together thank you emilia for all your support throughout if not for her i have not i would not have been talking today to you thank you once again you're welcome it's my pleasure uh to start with my topic so let me present my presentation to you yeah uh, to give, begin with my uh, presentation and my talk on plants that thrill but kill these are the plants which actually all these are beautiful plants but sometimes we get deceived by them it is said it is easy to be deceived by plants one part may be edible while another poisonous nothing could be safer to eat than a tomato and at the stem of tomato is very poisonous and if a potato is left exposed to light it turns green this is a sign that poison is present and that potato should not be eaten i do not know whether you are aware of this that tomato plant is poisonous this mildly poisonous and it may cause certain symptoms in humans as well as uh, in pets when eaten and so also potato i will be dealing with this in detail little later we eat many plants in our diet but we must remember to be choosy to choose right plants some plants trees or shrubs are potential killers of man some part of the ornamental plants which are in your garden the flowers in your your in your own yard may contain deadly poison and you are not aware of them many poisonous plants are so common and they're seemingly innocuous you do not suspect their toxic qualities and who are infected most of the time are the children children being very inquisitive children in learning about the environment are very inquisitive and they like to try them and what attracts them are the brightly colored parts such as the flowers the berries which they prefer but none of the other parts of the plant can exempt from child's curiosity how do plants normally poison we'll say plants are just they but they can poison you in three different ways in contact if you touch them if you happen to touch them they may cause painful skin irritations since our skin is outermost part which are in contact with the plant so they can cause skin irritations especially the latex the milky juice from the plants the thorns the prickles the spines so this spines and this prickles they may contain many other things that causes skin irritations second way it can poison is ingestion and normally this happens in smaller children 
because children are the first ones to put anything in their mouth. So ingestion, they cause internal poisoning when eaten. And thirdly, inhalation. You will say, how inhalation? Okay, are we inhaling plants? Yes, we do. When we burn different parts of the plant, the smoke, if you're exposed to smoke, some of them can be very, very dangerous. And you will not even know that you are sick because of the plant uh, smoke that you have inhaled. You will think that you have got some symptoms, some heart attack, some uh, other mild symptoms, which was already there within you. But no, we are not aware of these sometimes, nor even the doctor. So plants produce chemicals. Many plants have become poisonous. And most poisoning are normally found in children. What about adults? That doesn't mean that adults do not get poisoned. Normally poisoning in adults will be rare, but um, eating unknown parts, especially we know adults normally uh, go for doing Ayurvedic medicines. We do some uh, self-medication. This plant is useful, that plant is useful, but we have to know to correctly identify the plant when we do self-medication. Same thing as we said, misuse of herbal teas not knowing which plants to use for certain preparations. By confusion with or by falsification of plant food stuff. We don't know properly which is that, which looks similar. And sometimes adults will consume them in suicide attempts. And also as drugs, we have a number of plants which are drug plants. We have marijuana, we have ham, we have others which are also drug plants, are said to be poisoning. Now, why plants become poisonous? We all know, like animals, plants also are under threat. They also need to protect themselves. They need to grow. They need to protect themselves. From whom? They need to protect from the bacteria, the viruses, the fungi, the insects, the herbivores, which are feeding on them, and not exceptional, man also. So the plants defend themselves with the presence of thorns, spikes, prickles, stinging hairs, all these are the parts which are, as a defense, the plants develop in course of time. Sometimes you'll find they defend themselves by accumulating calcium oxalate crystals into their uh, leaves, into their stem. These are nothing but these are um, thorny, pokey, raphides. They're very rough. And therefore, these plants, which have calcium oxalate crystals in them, are normally avoided by cattle. And so, you'll find, and these raphides, which are they, if at all consumed, if at all enters into your mouth, can cause a lot of swelling and irritation, block your throat, and even cause suffocation. Then presence of alkaloids. Alkaloids are normally bitter. The plants develop these alkaloids so that the herbivores, the cattle grazing on them, find the uh, parts of the plants bitter to eat. Some of these alkaloids are very poisonous and causes cardiac arrest. Cyanogenic compounds. Some of them also shows the presence of terpenoids and phenolics, which are all secondary metabolites which are produced in plants. So these are all protective for the plant as a defense so that they can protect themselves. Now, let us go to some of the plants in our own yard around us, around surrounding us, a few plants that I have picked up. There are many more. This one is Eberus precatorius, also called as crab's eye, or rosary pea. Uh, if you were a kid and you have seen these earlier, now these plants are very rare, but I remember them because we have been playing with the seeds. This is called as gujuli. The seeds of these plants are very bright, lovely. They look like uh, the eyes. They look like small beetles. So the... Uh, plant is a small shrubby plant 
with the purple color flowers and the le uh, the uh, seeds are very bright these the seeds are the bright ones which are very dangerous it is said the seeds if ingested leads to severe gastroenteritis it causes vomiting diarrhea cramps and even these bruised seeds and you know, wherever this they are injected on the skin they are very painful can cause swelling and may be very very dangerous when i say dangerous may even sometimes almost lead you to death so this one is rosary pea you must have seen this or if not uh, nowadays it is very rare but uh, 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 this is becoming little extinct now now this one all of you have seen this is the most common there will be none who have not seen this this is lantana camara called as ganeri this lantana it comes in beautiful colors very attractive it is called as ganeri because of the peculiar smell that it gives now you find all parts of this plants are poisonous and we are not away they are there in our garden they are there where we are standing where we are going anywhere they have grown in the wild they are very fatal this plant causes bloody diarrhea if consumed green berries which are there of this are uh, fatal for young children and and i see even more dangerous means very very dangerous so this is lantana then we have nerium oleander or nerium indicum now this plant is a lovely plant beautiful plant which is uh, flowering in bunches you find this is a small shrub and grown in the indian garden says it is said and all parts of the plants are poisonous from the stem roots leaves flowers now this plant is a very dangerous plant and i see why because you find this plant has been taken up as an avenue plant by pwd growing along all the highways you can see it growing from bambole to kottali uh, down the bridge and along the new highway which is constructed they have recently started this growing uh, this plant which is very poisonous and what how it is poisonous eating a small part of this plant which may come in different colors they are pink they are yellow they are red can be very dangerous a leaf a small leaf is enough to harm the child the symptoms will diarrhea uh, uh, the uh, it has a cardiac glycoside which acts, attacks directly the heart the heart rate slows down there is shaking muscular twitching followed by exhaustion drowsiness and even coma very important thing about this plant is you find that you should be aware now wood of this plant cannot be used even if it is dried and then you are burning it it gives off poisonous fumes that can lead you in coma the fumes inhalation can lead you in coma it was said that alexander the great he said that during in his military uh, uh, power that time many he lost many of his men why because they had eaten meat squared by on these twigs of this plant so it is a very fatal and a very dangerous plant so be careful and be aware not all beautiful things are uh, good same way like uh, nerium we have this is as also an yellow oleander again taken up by Uh, P W D the government along uh, growing it as an avenue tree, a uh, plenty of it has been grown now. And uh, recently, uh, and I have already written a letter to uh, the P W D saying that this plant is very dangerous and has not to be taken up as an avenue tree. And also, I am preparing an article to write on the newspaper. So this is called as canel. Now this causes burning sensation in the mouth, especially the fruit. it causes dryness of the throat vomiting diarrhea headache dizziness dilated pupils irregular action of the heart and there is collapse and even coma okay so this is the elu elo oleander you can see this plant this is a recent picture that i have taken along the uh, highway in bambolim this is at bambolim 
So you can see the plants been taken up for growing all over. You have seen throughout it has been grown. The next one is Strychnox nutswamica. Now this is called commonly called as a crow fig or caro. Now this plant is a big tree. You find this growing uh, in front of uh, in Porvori. You find this in front of Damia de Goa. There's a big tree with this orange color fruits. They're very attractive. You also have I have seen also one tree at the university near chemistry department. Now the seeds of these are very uh, this, uh, this shining and they have nice uh, hairs which are uh, makes it very attractive. Now this is very very bitter. I remember earlier they used to say that this uh, uh, the bitter fruit of this is uh, the most poisonous plant. I knew this during my earlier days. The choking sensation of this throat that causes caused by this seeds. It causes stiffness of the neck and face, twitching of the muscles, increases neuromial activities, eyeball prom becomes prominent, pupils get dilated, mouth is covered with fraught, suffocation, asplasia, and even, becomes even more dangerous. Then this plant, what is called as datura metal or datura, we all know this plant. This is the most common plant and we use it as medicine for mums. The leaves are ground and applied as for mums. And in fact, I will tell you that most of the poisonous plants are also used in medicinal plants. But after detoxification, the alkaloids that are uh, detoxified or they are uh, being treated and then used as medicine because alkaloids are used as medicines. Now here, uh, the common name we have here is green thorn plant because of the thorny uh, fruit, which is the most poisonous one. This is called as Dutro in Konkani. Now, the fruit is very sedative. It causes hallucinogenic effect. So your whole head goes around. The voice becomes unrecognizable and the vision is affected. The patient lapses into coma. Next one, also a common aging plant in our garden. This is a common aging plant which is cut and trimmed to make a, a nice aging. This is golden dew or golden edge. Vernacular name is Grinald. The fruit is lovely. It looks like small uh, uh, orange color fruits. This fruit is slightly poisonous and it has alkaloids, uh, alkaloidic type of reaction. Deaths have been reported from the ingestion of this. Leaves and fruits contain saponins. The bark contains glycosidal principle. The leaves yield saponins. Okay, but the fruit is more dangerous, more than the saponins. The glycoside, which is contained in the fruit, is more dangerous. Ricinus commune is also called as a castor oil plant or arand. We say it called as arand or arandi. Now, the above picture is a fruit and you can see the seeds down. The seeds looks nice, they are uh, like uh, nicely painted. It looks like as though they have been painted, very nice seeds to look at. We know we all use castor oil, which is extracted from, uh, the, this is a wild growing castor. Okay, now in India, uh, it is the largest producer, we know India is the largest producer, producer of castor oil and the plant is uh, not poisonous, but the seeds are poisonous to people, animals, and insects. The seeds contains one of the most poisonous naturally occurring substances known to man. And it can kill a child as a toxic protein resin which is present in that. So which causes vomiting and diarrhea. We have Diffenbachia, the spotted dumb, or we also call it the dumb cane. Now, why this plant is called as a dumb cane? And this is a very lovely indoor plant. Now, this, the above plant, which is grown on top, is dumb cane. The second one is not the dumb cane. I'll tell, tell you about the second one later. Now, this dumb cane uh, is so-called because 
the juice of this or the leaves of this if uh, if ingested by the children or anyone it causes it has presence of calcium oxalate crystals which i uh, uh, spoke about earlier okay they have raphides the calcium oxalate crystals in them so the juice of this once get entered into your mouth it causes irritation the swelling and it starts scratching and you will find the whole uh, throat gets swollen it gets blocked and you get suffocated and sometimes even uh, you die of suffocation okay so if you consume this you have to see that you bring lot of water okay and run immediately to the doctor then with the next plant which is down there uh, uh, okay and all, not only that it causes impairment of speech and that's why it is called as dumb keys so mm -hmm. the mucus you uh, temporary you will find even for 3 to 4 days you can remain speechless then we have this is called as a peace lily which is there down spatifylum also having the similar effect that's why i put them together okay spatifylum also causes uh, uh, diarrhea and uh, uh, this it has calcium oxalate crystals in that and causes lot of irritations in the mouth hydrangea uh, megaphylla this hydrangea is a lovely plant by one of my most favorite plant with beautiful colors this is also called as a nature's litmus now this is called as nature's litmus because you will find the same plant will show two colors in different types of soil when you see the so the blue color flower you know the soil is acidic and the flowers are pink the soil is basic so therefore we call it as nature's litmus these are the most beautiful flowers but you will find it does have a uh, mild poisoning in it leaves in flower buds causes diarrhea it causes vomiting abdominal pain gastroenteritis depression increase of heart rate and body temperature so if uh, if ingested this can all the symptoms can happen look at this flowers they look so beautiful they are the flames they look like the flames we call it as a tiger's claw or vagaso bosco now these are not the normal plants which are grown in our garden these are the ones which are normally wild growing it has beautiful leaves um, which uh, the leaves which uh, the the curls around the support so it has a tendril along the, uh, for the leaf take a Uh, so the rhizomes are here it is not the leaves or the fruits or the flowers of this but the rhizome the underneath part of it is which is so this is uh, in large doses it's highly poisonous causing vomiting hair loss 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 of consciousness convulsions convulsions such respiratory distress and burning sensation okay other parts of the plant are also not so harmful as compared to that of the rhizome then we have philodendron which is a hybrid variety and mucuna uh, prudensis i'll tell you first about this mucuna now mucuna all of you must be knowing about this plant have you seen this plant i do not know look at the beautiful flowers the flowers are very beautiful they're hanging and the pods are also beautiful and silky to look at but if you touch them they are very dangerous because they cause a severe itching it has hairs on it the hairs are um uh, uh they itch the whole body so this uh, this is called as mazra in konkani we must have heard this uh i remember these used to be used mixed with powder and then used for some if you want to irritate someone so they are very uh, uh, itchy so the pods went touch because they contain serotonin they contain serotonin um, a chemical which causes itching uh, the whole body is uh, itched and then you'll find out you get swollen and the, there is reddening and so on then we have these other plant which is philodendron 
Now, there are different types of philodendrons. Now, all these philodendrons uh, causes burning sens sensation of the leaves, mouth and tongue. Causes nausea, vomiting, diarrhea and salivation if consumed. We have Plumeria alba. This is the champa or the temple tree we see. Now, these plants, both these, the milky bush, okay, euphorbia and plumeria, they both have latex, the milk, the white, uh, the white latex, which enters into the eye can be very dangerous. So the milky latex, most, most of the plants that have milky latex should be avoided, especially in your eyes. Latex is rubificant. And it is very corrosive. It causes uh, blisters on your body. Rash and blisters on contact with the skin. Okay. So in case of this milk boost or nibel, this plant is only, you will find no leaves on it. It's only the stem. Okay. Uh, the latex causes severe inflammation and pain and excruciating uh, pain if it comes in contact with the skin or into the eyes. So, uh, it is said that um, the thieves used to, or the criminals used to first take the latex of this and destroy the eyes of the animals. Then we have alamander, uh, which is copper. Again, I have put this because uh, of the milky uh, latex, which is there, which is harmful. The sap causes itching, rash on the skin, and burns the eyes. Hello. 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 Yes. Am I audible? Yes. Yeah. Yes. It causes nausea, elevated temperature, and irritation of the mouth and lips. So we have to be cautious when it comes to the latex of most of the plants. Then we have here the common lily. Now, this I have put specially not because of uh, humans, but it is more because of the pets. Now, this entire lily plant is toxic. The stem, the leaves, the flowers, the pollens, and even the water in the vase in which you have kept them. And eating just a small amount of leaf or a small petal or a licking of few pollen grains, of uh, you will find... They're very dangerous for your pets, especially cats. Drinking the water from the vase can cause your cat to develop fatal kidney failure in less than three days. So keep this lilies away from your cats. Dogs may not be affected much by this. Okay. For dogs, this lily, the peace lily, spatifila, may be mildly dangerous. Then, as I was talking to you about tomato, Lycopasica esculentum, tomato, uh, the tomato fruit is not poisonous, but the leaves and, as I said, the stem is poisonous because uh, it is having a glycoside called as tomatin. Okay, when you rub the tomato uh, leaf between your fingers, you get a bitter odor. That's a smell of that alkaloid. And, but consumption of this can cause stomach pain, vomiting, diarrhea, headache, and respiratory disorders. What about potato? The green potatoes, we say, or wherever you go to the market, see that you don't take any green potatoes. If you are consuming them, fine. See that you remove the green part of the potato. Because wherever there is this green or chlorophyll development has taken place, that part is forming poison. Okay, so the fact that green color, the bitter taste that potatoes usually develop can indicate the presence of the toxin. Even the sprouted potatoes, uh, if they are uh, slightly sprouting with greenish color, then you do not consume them. Then... We know of Malus Domestica. You must be knowing away of this one after seeing the movie Mom. If you have seen the movie Mom, where they're using the seeds as a poison. 
so be careful you don't use it okay only in large amount it can cause poisoning otherwise uh, in small amount uh, not much so apple seeds contain amaldelin and this is a substance which releases cyanide when it comes in contact with the juice from the stomach that is uh, hydrochloric juice and sugars when ingested it gets converted to form into hydrogen cyanide which is a poison so uh, so acute toxicity and rare accidental inject injection of the seeds uh, can happen okay when consume seeds in large quantity not only this seeds also seeds of apricots and cherries they are also very dangerous uh, when uh, uh, if they are um, the hard seeds but if they are broken and they are consumed they can be dangerous uh, yes these are some of the plants that i have uh, just listed to you which are few are common few are wild and uh, few are grown in your gardens okay so we know like this we have also mushrooms we have to be very careful when mushrooms uh, uh, when you collect mushrooms in the rainy season consumption you have to know the right type of mushrooms uh, to be uh, consumed the more colorful the mushrooms are the more dangerous they are we have these mushrooms called as amanita they are all beautifully lovely colored one and they are the most dangerous and the most poisonous ones so you have to be careful when you are dealing with and holding mushrooms in your hands so what are the different ways to prevent poisoning so first we have to become familiar with the dangerous plants in your area now you know at least some of them which are dangerous in your home in your own garden know them by sight and by name do not eat wild plants just like that and mushrooms keep plants seeds fruits and bulbs away from children because children are the ones who are just first thing is to put in their mouth teach at early age to keep the plants and plant parts out of their mouth to avoid potential dangers of poisoning be certain you know the plants you use for your skewers for your meat or for your marshmallows do not allow children to suck nectar from plants simply don't see it is very sweet it is very good you have suck and see no please take care and make and also while making tea know your plants well know the plants before eating its fruits or berries don't say do not rely on your pets the pets are not eating then it is dangerous pets are eating it is, no what is dangerous for pets may not be dangerous for you so pets birds and squirrels to indicate non poisonous plants and avoid smoke from burning plants remember heating and cooking do not always destroy the toxic substances so be uh, choose your plants well when you are uh, cooking your food avoid smokes from burning plants yeah i already said this uh, do, uh, do not make home made uh, medicines from native or cultivated plants remember there is no safe test or rules of thumb for distinguishing edible from poisonous plants and some facts here it is always said in preparation for military missions includes learning of and identifying those harmful plants in their target area positive identification of edible plants will eliminate the danger of accidental poisoning and there is no room for experimentation when plants are concerned especially in unfamiliar territories thank you so you have to can ask yeah i'll take up the question and answers yes there are a few questions in the chat box i will read it out to them yes that would be fine yeah. so godwin ferreira is asking tomato stem has thorns like spikes are yes. they rapi rapids oh, sorry no. are they rapids is it no. harmful to no. the stem of tomato plants yeah see tomato plants may have little thorny structures but they are not rapids they are thorns thorns are meant as to poke so that it is avoided by cattle from eating while rapids are inside crystals which are minute 
and they're like you know like uh, uh, any other crystals like salt crystals like inside into the plant so they are different from there but the plant is uh, containing some glycosides inside that is more poisonous in tomato okay castor oil is made from castor seeds right yes. is it treated before being sold for consumption and application yes that's the that's the reason otherwise we would have been all lying down <laughs> yes it has been treated and then only it has been it is uh, uh, detoxified and then used for consumption okay uh, smoke from burning weed plants is dangerous weeds depends on which weeds it is yes but otherwise uh, burning is for grasses and all not much but when i said this particular plant nerium when you take it or like that devisha which is the most dangerous that can be very dangerous but other weeds may not be that much it may not be but if it is mixed with this it can have have lot of danger okay uh, julian is asking is the seed inside the apricot nut poisonous yes it is it is poisonous apricot nut is poisonous but it is hard and therefore it is chewed and thrown but if it is uh, crushed and eaten then it is poisonous okay uh, joseph saint and is asking uh, chirata that is kiritan uh, is taken orally as a bitter medicine how safe yes. is it yes uh, kirate is safe it can be taken uh, in moderate amount but anything in excess is poisonous okay that should be in particular amount that you have to take not too much of it kiraite uh, has been taken as a stomach uh, ache for uh, stomach uh, pains and it is good but too much of it is poisonous means for any for that matter anything in in excess can i ask you a question yes uh you spoke about alamanda katartika the golden trumpet yes uh, is it the common uh, flowers golden yellow they are also known as cups golden cups or yellow yes. cups is yes. it the same thing yes it is the same thing oh yeah you have in them now you have different varieties we have hybrid varieties like purple ones also coming in but the yellow ones are very common yellow ones are common yes you have now Uh, we have dwarf varieties we have the ones which are the long varieties and so on. yes and uh, the other one is uh, nericum indic indicum oleander yes. one uh, those come in yellow in uh, pink colors red yes. colors and they are, the plant grows to about uh, one and a half to 2 meters high yes is it uh, poisonous Yes, it is. That the is what plant. I was speaking about. It is normally grown in all gardens now. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. They are coming in white. They are uh, yellow. They are pink. Double petals and single petals, and they grow in bunches. That is what I am talking about. What is grown, taken up as an avenue tree uh, by the avenue plant along the roadside, which is very dangerous. Okay. I can see these two plants are very dangerous as compared to all the others what I have spoken. please avoid them uh, uh, no you can grow them in your garden no doubt but see that uh -huh. when you throw it out when you're cutting it be careful when you're dealing with them and where you're going to throw them whether you're going to burn it and so on oh because i normally cut the flowers and bring home and put it in the vase <laughs> no, fine putting in the vase all right but see that you wash your hands and this all right and but if there are children you have to be careful okay thank you so much Okay, there's a question by Elizabeth Thomas. She's asking inside the seed of apricots there is another seed. Is yes. that edible? No, that's what I'm saying. The outer nut, outer cover is hard, but inside what is there is poisonous. Okay, okay. So if anybody else wants to ask any question, they can uh, unmute themselves and interact with uh, Dr. Maria, or you can even put your questions in the chat box. I will read it out. I, I I've known I, I myself have uh, taken the apricot nuts and uh, powdered them and used them as garnishing. <laughs> but uh, but be careful next time because you may not be knowing that it is because of that. Sometimes you get uh, vomiting, or maybe get uh, uh, what is that uh, other symptoms. 
okay so but but also it is that how much amount you have used mm. that also okay but in small yeah. amount it may not cause that much it may be uh, for your body it is all right but then after if it is more amount then it may cause a lot of uh, problem yeah okay thank you ashley has a question can you eat papaya leaves can we eat mango leaves it is said to be good for diabetics yeah no my, uh, papaya leaves are good they don't have any this uh, not mango but ma uh, mango uh, fruit has that juice when it is raw and even it is uh, this that is not good that's an acid it's like an acid that causes blisters in on the under the skin that juice that comes up when you remove when it's stalk of the mango when mango fruit is grown that stalk has uh, that juice that comes out it's an acid it causes blisters on the skin okay uh, any more questions anyone hello yes yes yeah uh, now regarding the papaya when you yes. cut the papaya and the, the black seeds which are there Yes. I was I was believed that papaya seeds are good for joints or something like that. Is it okay or uh, it could be consumed? Yes, papaya seeds. Papaya seeds are very good for bones. Papaya seeds can be used for bones. They're very good. If when eaten raw, also. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, anyone else? Me, somebody had given me a plant. Euphorbia thiruchali. Yeah, euphorbia. Yes. Yeah. Saying that it is good for curing wounds which are not healing for a long time. Yeah. So there are some external plants which are there which can be used for external um, as, as an external medicine. Okay. But when consumed, may cause a lot of distress. Thank you. Okay. So especially that uh, uh, latex and all. But we have to be careful. Simply just uh, taking anything as medicine will be a, a lot of problem. Hello. Yeah. Yes. Hello. Yes. 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 Is it is is it true that there is some plants which can uh, repel snakes in, from the garden? Is it true? Repel? Snakes. 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 Uh, yes. Uh, one very good example of uh, repelling snake plant is moringa. You know. Oh. Stick. Yes, yes, I knew that. But is it is it really true? Yes, it is. The leaves of that repel because of that particular smell, the odor, they run away. Okay. What, what about the snake plant then? Huh? The snake plant, what do you normally ah, see? Sanfiviera, that is snake plant. Uh, it is not uh, repellent for the snake, but um, it is um, it is having some slight poisonous properties. Sanfiviera. Okay. Fine. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much. Yes. Are moringa leaves uh, edible? Yes, moringa is very good, and I'm writing an article on that for a college magazine. It's very useful. Every part of the plant is useful. There are some plants which are very uh, useful. There are some others which are very poisonous. Yes. It is there some plants. Huh? Sansevieria, that snake plant, that is good for oxygen. It releases yes. a lot of oxygen. Yes. Oxygen, yes. There are some plants which kept indoors also can remove carbon dioxide, remove uh, impurities from the air also. Yes. There are some plants they say is good to repel mosquitoes. Yes. Which are those? Uh, that, uh, you can use this to see. To see is very. Yes, to see is a very good mosquito repellent. And also, and also, and and also. Lemon, lemon grass, lemon grass, yes. Okay, um, there's one question Can we grow uh, moringa in a pot? Moringa to grow in a pot, uh, you will get only a few branches. Uh, <laughs> if you have a bigger pot, no, it is actually not very easy because it grows very. It's like a tree, and it is very delicate plant. Those who don't have a garden, garden space, and all, it will be like a. Right. Yes. It can grow. Small. I had tried uh, growing. 
any any plants uh, to repel monkeys frederick's question <laughs> Oh no! I do not know any plant that <laughs> drives away monkeys. <laughs> I don't okay. think. Okay, Joseph Fernandez, you can unmute yourself and ask a question, please. Any plants to repel uh, rats? Repel rats? No, you can have uh, rat poisons of that medium. Of which plant? Rat poison? Uh, that medium. Medium. What is the vernacular name, please? Yeah, that one. What you what you were talking about the pink color flowers and. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Jennifer Fernandez says she had um, raw butterfly juice. Uh, yes. For food poisoning, is it good? She had raw butterfly juice. Ah, uh, raw butterfly seeds. Okay. And she got food poisoning. She had it to cure uh, food poisoning. Yes, bottle uh, bottle gourd uh, gourd is very good. It's good for swelling also. It's a, it's very good uh, uh, vegetable to eat. It. It's very good. Okay. Earlier, uh, Dutra was used for uh, some uh, medicine for uh, yes. for mums. For mums, yeah. But then you yes. put it in the poisonous uh, category. It See, uh, uh, poisonous plants are also medicinal plants, but we have to be careful not to consume them. Yeah, datura is used for mums. It is applied externally, not consumed internally. Is it the leaves of datura? Yeah, the leaves, the leaves. But the part which is very poisonous is the fruit. Fruit. And the fruit. Okay. Any more questions, anyone? Anyone? Any any more questions? Yeah, Gary, you can unmute yourself. Yes, Gary. Okay, I would like to ask whether um, there are any poisonous grasses, like commonly grown, uh, commonly found poisonous grasses. No, I have not uh, heard nor I have read about any poisonous grasses. Okay. No. Thank you. Hello. Yes. Uh, hello. Can I yes. ask? Is bougainvillea yeah. plant poisonous? No, bougainvillea is not poisonous, but the thorns are very pokey and they can cause little uh, harm to the body. That's all. Otherwise, they are not poisonous. Also, I wanted to know about orchids. Orchids. Yes, uh, orchids, orchids are not poisonous. Yeah. Okay, the leaves are not poisonous. No, no. Okay, thank you. Um, the participants want to connect with you after the session as well. So, uh, do you want to give your phone number or email ID or something? Uh, of course, they can take my. If anybody wants to uh, contact me, uh, my phone number is. Yeah, you can take down nine four. Nine four. Two two zero. Double two zero. Five five. Double five. Three seven seven. Okay. I'll and my. You can have my uh, personal email ID. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Maria. M A R I A. Yeah. Maria Anina E N I N E J. Okay, I will. I will write it in the chat box. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, there's a question by Renita. Yeah. Konkan Dudhi skins juice is good for kidney stones. Is it true? Which one? Konkan Dudhi skin juice. 
I mean, it is just about your wherever you have typed your email ID. Just about that. Yeah. Okay, Konkan do the yeah, Konkan do the. Okay, skin's juice is good for kidney stones. Is it true? Uh, I do not know about Konkan do this juice uh, for kidney stone, but it is Konkan do the fruit is very good. That's why I mean the vegetable is very good even for swelling and for uh, other reasons. I do not know whether it is uh, rightly used for kidney stone, or, but for kidney stone you can have. Um, Bryophyllum leaf, which is very very good. You know bryophyllum, the leaves we used to use and put yes. into the hooks earlier for the right. small roots to come. Bryophyllum. That is very good. That is called as uh, patarpadi. The name of the plant itself is patarpadi because it is good for kidney stones. How you use those leaves, man? Do you eat them okay, raw or you boil them? Raw. You have to take the juice, extract the juice, wash them up, extract the juice and have it with honey. It's very good. Thanks. Yeah, I wanted to ask a question. Can yes. I? Yes. Yeah, there's, there are some weeds like which have this uh, white color flowers. Uh, if somebody is having sinus, is that not good? That those weeds which come with some flowers, no? Uh, there are some flowers, you know. For, when I we said sinus, because they cause causes causes allergy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some, yeah. Somebody was so warning the, me, so my daughter is having that. Especially grasses. Especially grasses causes lot of pollen allergies, and we have this acacia plant growing all along the roadside. You know that. Uh, flat leaves with yellow color flowers, plenty of yellow color flowers. Yeah, like but in bunches, in bunches. In bunches. Australian uh, acacia, ever new trees, ever new trees there. Ever new trees, they are grown as along the roadside. So okay. they cause a lot of pollen allergy. She must be referring to the Pimpinella, Maria, the Congress ah, grass. Ah, yes. <laughs> yeah, there's white, the roadside, yes, small flowers. Yes, White the, flowers. The garden they grow. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. The many of them causes pollen allergy. Yeah. So they have got not good allergy. to have it around, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Hey, miss, uh, miss, you taught me in Xavier. So it's nice to attend your lecture after a long time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks, you. <laughs> uh, miss, uh, uh, people give gifts. You, you mentioned that the lily plant is toxic, yes. right? Uh, people yes. give it usually as a bouquet, as a gift. I, yeah, I but... really don't like the smell. Uh, so is the, like, uh, are there some organic volatile compounds if you keep them in the house or something like that that affects you? No, they are very good for humans, but when it comes to cats, they are very bad. That's why I mentioned. Only for cats, not even for dogs. Dogs, not that much. So they okay. have some substance that, you know, that uh, damage the respiratory system of the digestive system and respiratory system of the cats. Miss, in general, is it okay to keep like flowers and all that give a uh, smell in your in the house? Yes, yes, lilies. Yes, fine. They are good otherwise. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Oswald. Yes, Oswald. Okay, uh, Louis Goodino is asking, is there any uh, short short handbook on these plants? Uh, there is no handbook. In fact, I've, uh, there is, I think, if you go uh, search for poisonous plants, you should get. Um, so I will be, actually, in fact, I had thought of writing a book on poisonous plants of Goa. I hope uh, it is possible now. It may take some time. Okay, otherwise, I think there are some books available. Okay. Why do few grasses give distinct smell and many don't give? Uh, because the, the particular type of uh, alkaloids present in there, which uh, some alkaloids do not give smell. Some alkaloids may uh, give smell and that smell may be as, as a repellent for animals and others. It is because of that. The others may have inside in there, but they may not uh, performing. That smell is not coming. For example, lemongrass um, if you crush it between, then you're breaking some cells in there and uh, making these glycos glycosides to come out, and then it gives lovely smell. Okay, while others may not. Who 
would it be advisable to keep a tulsi plant inside the house inside the rooms to keep the mosquitoes away the yeah, tulsi plant uh, you will have to grow it in your pot and keep it it is good but yeah, the, it, since it is green in color and it requires uh, sunlight uh, yeah. it requires to be kept outside and uh, inside it will not grow well maybe only in the nights bring them and keep them in the rooms <laughs> it is not advisable to uh, bring in the night you can keep it around uh, along the you know in your galleries along but not inside okay. because yes the plants uh, if, even sleeping under the uh, tree during the night time is not good because of because the co2 oxygen and uh, that they will be releasing lot of carbon dioxide Yeah, but then they advise uh, this um, snake plant to keep inside, right? Yeah, now that is because these absorb. There are some plants which absorb carbon dioxide, but most of them, uh, uh, the most of the plants during the night time, they will be uh, respiring more than photosynthesizing. That's why the the snake plant has opposite mechanism that gives out oxygen at night. That's a different type of plant. It absorbs carbon okay. dioxide. yeah it gives mm -hmm. out yeah carbon dioxide at night it has an opposite mechanism to the normal plants that's why no it gives out oxygen in the night yeah because uh, whereas other plants give out uh, carbon dioxide at night yes yes this has got a different mechanism to the other plants that's why yes. this snake plant can be kept inside yes Uh, any, I mean, do these marigold flowers have any toxic? Um, just one second, I missed it. Uh, toxic, toxic effect, toxic marigold effects. plants? Uh, uh, no, I don't think so. I have not come across that uh, marigolds are toxic. They are uh, not toxic. They can act as uh, uh, repellent, but attract uh, attractants of butterflies. Oh, oh. They, you have marigold plant, it will have lot of butterflies coming to you. any adverse effect if, uh, if you have a money plant in the house a uh, money plant is uh, having that uh, no the same type of property it has that calcium oxalate crystals in it so oh. having inside the house no problem but see that it is not been consumed okay it does have uh, that it is potash has uh, that effect is there okay yes Uh, any more questions, anyone? What is the vernacular name for bryophyllum? Bryophyllum, patthar vadi. Or the common name? Common yes. name? I, I don't know in Konkani, but they have given that as patthar vadi because okay. it is used for kidney stones. Kidney stones. Okay. No, you know, if you uh, type bryophyllum and you uh, see that, you'll get the picture bryophyllum. You'll know what plant it is. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ranita uh, has given a small piece of information. Ganyeri leaves, when boiled, are good yeah. for inhalation when you have a bad cold. This was extensively used during COVID times. Oh, I do not know about this, but uh, the uh, the leaf when consuming of this is dangerous. But I did not know about the inhalation of this was used for COVID times. But we have to be careful. Anyone seeing anything? During COVID time, many people came up with different uh, uh, medicines. You have to be careful. Yes. Because I'm not aware of Ganeri being used as for COVID or for cold. Uh, and this was a. Do you have any question? You have raised your hand. For piles, you can use. Uh, if you have got piles, then you have. You can use the touch me not plant. Okay. 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 They use it also for skin um, problems. Yes, for even for wounds and all for skin problems. Yes. That uh, um, uh, touch me not plant is very good. Uh, Elizabeth Thomas is asking, will you also do a talk on medicinal plants of Goa? Uh, I have written a book on medicinal plants, and most of them uh, with the vernacular names also written on it. Uh, I think uh, that few copies were there. <laughs> Now, I don't think I I'll have to bring out more copies of those. Okay. 
okay there's another and piece of information i'm interested in algae i've written a book on algae because algae is a, a lot of interest to me mm -hmm. uh if possible you can just forward me the links of these books or uh, maybe the soft copies uh i can share it with the participants from where they can purchase it or something or if you want to share it you can oh, i'll have to yeah, i i can uh, no i don't have them in soft copy this was log back that i had written and kept okay <laughs> yeah okay. so maria is there anything for gallbladder yes vera is there anything for gallbladder stones no i don't know i don't know i'll have to find out Okay. Yes. Uh, you wanted my number. I'll type it here. Yeah, yeah, I, there it is. Okay. Yes, Savio has said it. Yeah. Is there any flower or plant of periwinkle uh, that is sadabahar toxic for humans or pets? A periwinkle is a very very lovely plant, and. Uh, it is it, it is in fact been said that uh, it is used to cure uh, cancer in initial stages apart from good for diabetes periwinkle especially the white variety sadafuli is very very good and in fact i think they have been trying to find medicine for cancer to of this plant because uh, the uh, alkaloid in that is very very useful is this the same plant which is in pink and white color like available in pink and yeah white? pink and white the white variety is better than the pink one oh okay you have which a part of the plant uh, periwinkle is good uh, for diabetes ma'am yes jema uh, which part of the periwinkle is good for plant uh, which part of the plant uh, which is good for diabetes leaf Okay, the leaves. Okay, yes. thank you. you. You have a leaf every day. It's very, very good. It's little bitter, but it is very good. It can be consumed just like that directly. It can be munched on, uh, chewed. Yes. Like. yes. Okay, okay. Thank you. Okay. Um. Anyone uh, wants to like unmute themselves and interact? They can. Uh, it's nice to know. I did not know about here. Elizabeth has put about the watermelon skin is good for gallstones. Uh, uh, I do not know. It's uh, good to know also. What is it? Uh, she's put in the chat box, Elizabeth Thomas, that uh, watermelon skin is good for gallstone. Okay. Yes. How is it to be consumed? And father. Wallbex is saying gallbladder stones, fresh coconut palm, palm sur on empty stomach works well. Sur, yes. Toddy, 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 toddy. There, he's put in the chat box, Father Wallbex. So he's also a student of mine, Father Wallbex, and we are working together at Saint Joseph Vas College. So, <laughs> in combination, we are going to bring up, bring out lot of things. Uh, Ezzy is asking, how do you consume mimosa for piles? M mimosa? For piles. For piles. No, it is not to consume, but uh, mimosa uh, plant leaves uh, and the plant itself has to be uh, boiled in water and the fumes of that coming out have to be used for the piles. You have to sit over that uh, and take that, uh, you know, that steam. You don't have to ask a question. Yes. Yeah. Go like, ahead. Uh, ma'am. Yes. Ma'am, we take the onion peel and we'll boil with water. Like, it's like yes. good for if you take the steam. It's good for health. Like, uh, in COVID times, it was recommended you boil the onion yes. peel. Yes. Onion is very good. Onion is a medicine. Not uh, not onion. Sorry, like lemon. I'm talking about. Ah, uh, lemon. Lemon also is good. Lemon also is good. Like, uh, but it is also contain lemon, uh, limon in like a very like flammable in the ke chemistry field. It's like a very flammable substance and all. Yeah, but lemon is good because um, those uh, it has that uh, this you know that uh, that flavor that uh, this juice comes out from that from the skin outer skin also is very good. Okay, like uh, it doesn't have any problem with uh, limonene, so. 
if you're going to boil shivam, this shivam you have lemon every day uh, no not really like if you take oranges on and lemon also no so yes. if we just boil it so like one question comes to my mind it contains limonene so like it's very flammable and all the stuff uh, it's get so vaporized and all so do, like you don't mean, take boil you don't take it boil you take it raw okay yes so in covid times it was like a very famous like you boil the lemon you boil the lemon with water covid and- times in covid time there were a lot of famous medicines that came out <laughs> so you have to be knowing which one is good and which one is not okay thank you ma'am for your advice yes sir sure. yeah i would now request um, emilia ma'am to kindly propose the vote of thanks yeah thank you dr maria Uh, for this wonderful talk you have given a meticulous uh, in with a meticulous detail all the uh, plants that are found uh, in our backyard and and uh, so now we can we are, can be aware of which plants we should be careful about to touch or not to touch and to handle with especially with children and with pets so uh, despite your very busy schedule and your responsibilities you have made time to put in all this information for us and sharing it with us i think you've done a wonderful job all the best to you and in your future endeavors god bless you yeah it was pleasure uh, talking to everybody thank you all of you and giving a giving me chance to talk and tell others uh, what is good and what is bad uh, thank you i mm-hmm. hope all will be use it only for good purpose and not for bad purpose <laughs> yeah thank you bye Thank you very much.